Okay, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, my name is Adrian and I work as a support engineer at Puppet here in the Portland office. And so uh, the topic of this webinar is going to be uh, about the methods with which you can serve files using Puppet and what the impacts of those are specifically related to performance. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this is mostly for my own curiosity. Um, as part of this job, I see people perform this task in different ways, doing different things. And so I was just curious, what are the effects on performance of this? And how does Puppet serve the files? What are the API calls involved? And just kind of things like that. Uh, and I think when you're reading through technical documentation or working through this, it's not entirely obvious what all of the implications are. So uh, I wanted to go through that, did some research, and um, turns out there are some significant <clears throat> implications and impacts on performance uh, that can arise from how you do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're going to be looking at is the uh, humble file resource. So I have that pulled up here, specifically the source attribute. Um, the source attribute is just, this is the location of a file that I want to manage in my Puppet catalog, and it just tells Puppet where to get it from. So at a high level, there's basically two different methods with, with which you can do this. You can either have the source of the file come from Puppet itself, uh, that is a, a module or a location on disk on the master or a compiler where Puppet can fetch this file, or you can have it somewhere else and Puppet can simply instruct your agents to go download the file from like an HTTP server or Artifactory or something like that. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of live examples of these different methods, and we're just going to watch what happens and talk about it, talk about the implications, and see what happens. So if we flip over here to my control repo, uh, this is a control repo that I use for spinning up test boxes and just uh, kind of temporal things that I want to work on. And so one of the things that I want to do in this situation is just copy my vimrc over there. So uh, this is not a great example of a multi-user system or something in the real world because I'm just sticking this file out there. I'm not managing skeleton files, uh, anything like that. This is just, I'm the only one using this box. I just want to dump this file out there. Uh, and so what we're going to start with is this one right here. I have a couple below commented out just for ease of demonstration. Uh, but this is using the file resource with the source attribute. Uh, and this is a Puppet URI syntax. So in this situation, what it's saying is I have a module called base config, and I want to get this vimrc from that location and have that as part of my catalog. Um, so I already have this in place. It's already being used. So let's flip over to one of these test stacks. So it's just a, a master, a compiler, and an agent. And so what we're going to do to start is just say, whoops, I accidentally removed my vimrc, but it's managed by Puppet. So we'll just run it and watch what happens. Uh, in order to do that, it's hooked up to my compiler over here. But we're going to watch the Puppet server access log. And for those unfamiliar, um, all of our services have logs that um, create log entries for the API requests that they respond to. And there will be... Uh, various logging information in there, what IP it came from, what's the URI, uh, and some metrics associated with that. So we'll just start watching that, and we'll run Puppet on my agent, and we'll just uh, see what happens. So it's a vimrc managed in a module using a Puppet URI. And so as we see these things scroll by, we don't need to know exactly what all of these things do, but these are standard for every Puppet run that you'll perform. So the first one is a request to node, which gets the classification information and determines what environment this is going to be run on. Uh, and currently the way it works is you'll see three of these file metadata calls. So we saw a few of those, like right here. Uh, these are related to plugin sync. Uh, and what this is is stuff like facts, uh, custom facts, external facts, custom functions, uh, various things like that. Uh, because the first part of a Puppet run on an agent is submitting facts, we need to make sure that we have the most up-to-date versions of all the plugins and facts and things like that. So that's not something to be too concerned about for this demonstration, but know that that's normal. <clears throat> and then we have the request to compile the catalog, 
And then we see where we actually get the file from. Uh, we see a request to the static file content API, uh, getting the file from my base config, and over here, it put it back, uh, and then we submit the report. So that's kind of a quick life cycle of a puppet run. And uh, we'll come back to this later on, the static file content API. Uh, but just for now, know that that's what we got when we're using this approach with the, uh, the file in a module served from the Puppet Master or a compiler. Uh, so now let's look at if we do something a little differently. So I have an HTTP server running, uh, and that is also a valid way to do this. So I'm just going to take the same file, same vimrc, same byte size content and everything, and just dump it out to a different location. And so now the source is an HTTP URI, uh, and this is just the local address of my master, just for simplicity and demonstration. So it's going to dump the same file out to slash temp. I'll just uh, make this change real fast. Just some Git aliases that are ingrained into my brain. Don't worry about that. And I have a webhook set up so that this will happen automatically. And of course, because this is a live demonstration, the chances of things going wrong increase exponentially. But it looks like that happened just fine. So we're still monitoring the file over here. Uh, and now we have a second vimrc that's going to be dumped to slash temp from an HTTP location. Cool. Let's just see what happens there. So we've got the same node request, same three file metadata requests. All right, so that finished, and now we see that we have the new vimrc. But if you notice in the uh, compiler server log, we don't see anything related to the metadata of the file or the serving of the file, and that's because it came from the HTTP source. So what you see over here, uh, alignment's a little bit out of whack, uh, but this is the logging information from that HTTP server. So we can see a head request for the file, which is metadata information about it, uh, and then the actual get request to download the file. So the important takeaway from this is we didn't see any information in our compiler log about this because the puppet itself isn't serving this file. Uh, we instructed the agent to download it from a different source. And if we take a look at the IP address over here, uh, my agent is 192.168.05, and that is the entry in the logging that we see from the HTTP server. So the traffic for getting the metadata and the source of the file went from the master, or excuse me, from the agent to the HTTP server. So all Puppet did is say, here's a catalog, part of this catalog is this file, and here's where to get it from. And that's what happened. It's like, uh, other stuff's happening. All right, so uh, I think Puppet is running as a service over here, which I don't want for this demonstration, but we'll ignore that for now. All right, so we have those two situations, and there's also something that we can use called a file server mount. Mm. There we go. Uh, so this is something that you can use to serve files uh, from outside of your code directory or modules. Um, and we actually serve our PE packages this way if you look at these files. And so I've added an extra file server mount called extra files, uh, this uh, very secure and descriptively named path. We'll have yet another copy of the same file and the same byte size and everything. Uh, so this is a way to serve files that uh, are external to Puppet. And so we'll follow the same procedure of uncommenting this. And so now the source is still a Puppet URI, but it's pointing at a file server mount and not uh, a module. So let's look at that a little more closely. So the first one is Puppet one slash 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 modules, uh, and that shows you that it's part of a, a module managed by Puppet. But now we're just getting it from an, a file server mount that is not managed by Puppet. So we're going to dump another vimrc out there. Follow the same procedure to make sure this 
It's deployed okay. All right, there we go. We'll monitor this again and run the agent again. All right, so there we go. Uh, I've got the second file to find out here, and now we see some differences in the server log. So we've had the normal metadata and classification requests and all that. Now we have request for single file metadata for this extra file. And if we also notice the method with which, with which we serve the file is file content and not static file content. 